And welcome to ETF Edge, ETF Edge, everybody, your go-to place for everything ETFs. I'm your host, Bob Pisani. Let's get right to it. We've got a lineup, three of the best people in the business, Jan Von Eck, who runs Von Eck ETFs, and of course, the Von Eck organization. David Mann is the head of capital markets and global ETFs at Franklin Templeton, and Tim Seymour is the founder and CIO of Seymour Asset Management. Jan, let me kind of start with you in a sort of 30000 foot view of things right now. Where do you think we are right now? When will we get better visibility? Uh, we're going to have the mayors of some of the big states in the Northeast are going to be making a joint statement in the next couple of hours. Uh, I, we keep looking at China. I've talked to you about China. Uh, they seem to be setting some kind of precedent for getting back to normalcy. Can we follow that pattern? Or just in your sense, where are we right now? Yeah, Bob, um, good to see you. We've gone through a really important phase shift, I think, here. Um, I'll call it in the first phase, the only thing that mattered was what happened to the virus. You know, the central bank could cut rates and whatever. It just didn't ma ma matter. The market kept falling. And I think we are now now past that period of heightened uncertainty where normal stuff matters, like Fed stimulus things matter. We know from China their statistics, uh, they're about a month ahead of us, are not that encouraging. <laughs> While traffic is at 97 percent use, the public transportation use is only at 60 percent. So we've got a long ways to go before the economy starts recovering. But we've got this new era of tremendous Fed stimulus and the markets are reacting to that. So I think the playbook is kind of a replay of 08, 09, where you just have uh, a lot of central bank stimulus and maybe asset prices melt up in advance of the economic recovery. Yeah. That's my provocative thought Tim, for the Tim, day. Okay. Thank you, Jan. Tim, you're a, an active trader. What should we look for as signs of a bottom? What are you looking for? Is it, is it copper? Uh, is it a, uh, uh, some kind of uh, 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 pickup in a certain level of activity? What are you watching right now? Well, Bob, I mean, first of all, we, we've, we've had this uh, enormous rally off the bottom, and it's a little disturbing, actually, that this is the day when you get four or five Wall Street strategists that have come in and said, you know, time to get very bullish. Um, I, you know, I think, you know, you talk about copper, and we refer to it as Dr. Copper, and last night copper was up, you know, 2.5% in Shanghai um, on, I think, partially a squeeze, partially some inventory issues. And I think, you know, copper is, is certainly something we want to be watching. I, I think the copper markets of, of all the major commodities and certainly those that are the most cyclical is probably the most in balance and, and probably the one that I think ultimately could be the real tell on where supply demand, but really the demand factors are going to weigh through. So watch copper um, for sure. And, and, you know, Jan talked about the rest of the world and where they are ahead of us. And I mean, you, you did get some data on, on PMIs and manufacturing numbers. Uh, out of China. You even got some numbers out of Taiwan who didn't close down their economy the same way the rest of Asia did, uh, and they were significantly better. So you have at least these, these uh, you know, mile posts uh, in terms of the global economies that might be coming out of this first. Uh, of course, none of us really know really what the boomerang effect is, and I would agree. We have to continue to watch the virus, um, but the macro is interesting. And I, I, you know, again, using these analogs from 2008 and 2009, and, and also just talking about commodity prices, um, you know, commodity prices always overshoot. And, and you know, you, you don't want to buy commodities when they're cheap. You want to probably buy them when they're expensive. Uh, but I do think you have a case here um, where I, I think the, the response by OPEC Plus, the response in some of the commodity markets, which were already uh, in a lot of pain coming into this, um, I, I think we've gotten a case where you are building a base. And in fact, you know, the energy yeah. outperformance in the equities over the last couple of weeks is something um, isn't a straight line. But I, I think you can stay there. I, I feel pretty good about that move. Okay, there's your 30,000 foot view, folks. <laughs> we wanted to give you a big overview.